Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It feels so weird to say that after I think what two years? Maybe over two years? Um, yeah it's been a while since I made a video. Surprise? Question mark? I'm back? Question mark? It's been a, an interesting couple of years. A lot's changed. The world has changed. I've changed. I'm sure you've changed. Recently I've been falling back in love with uh, all of my old friends who make booktube videos and finding new creators and seeing how kind of booktube has changed um, recently and it's making me really miss it and I also started making kind of book talk content on TikTok and I've been really enjoying that I've been really enjoying being creative again um, because although I might have stopped making videos I certainly have not stopped reading and I thought you know what maybe now is the time to dip my toes back into the pool of YouTube uh, even though this is I feel like quite a different space now um, and start making videos again I'm not gonna make big plans because I don't know what I'm gonna do but I'd like to try and make like weekly videos and really stick to a schedule because I used to have so much fun making these videos. I think I started this channel when I was a fresh baby at uni. I was probably about 18 and I'm almost 28, which means I've been in the booktube community for 10 years, almost 10 years. I really miss it. And I have loads of exciting books that I've been reading and I wanna tell you about and not just keep that to a singular platform. Platform? Pa platform so yeah I think I think it's time I think it's time first of all if you're new here hello welcome to my channel my name is Rachel uh, and secondly if you are still subscribed and you see this appear hello welcome back it's nice to see you I hope you're all doing really well to ease myself in I thought I would start with just five of the best books I've read this year this year 2023 has been a very very good reading year for me on the whole I've read some absolutely incredible books and been sent some really, really interesting and fresh new releases. Right, where do we start? I'm very excited. Ah. Okay, I'm going to start with this because this is fun. And I read this really early on in the year. I think I maybe read this January or February and um, it stuck with me ever since. I know people say don't judge a book by its cover, but I'm just going to say this now. Every single one of these books has a beautiful cover and this first one is no different. So this is Mother Thing by Ainsley Hogarth. I mean, if you saw that in a store, would you not pick it up? Like that is so beautiful. I'd heard bits about this book before going in, but I went in relatively blind and I would say I would suggest the same thing for you as well. Essentially, this focuses around the central character of Abby and her husband, Ralph, and her mother-in-law Laura. So at the very start of the book we find out that Laura has committed suicide and it starts in the hospital with Abby and Ralph kind of dealing with this very sudden, very traumatic and stressful death. Um, Abby and Laura's relationship has always been um, fragile and interesting to say the least and Abby and Ralph actually live in Laura's house originally with her and then continue to live there after she's passed. Um, and, you know, with her gone, you would hope to think that the things in their relationship would begin to mend, but unfortunately, Laura still wants to stick around and she essentially haunts the house that they live in. This was really creepy and disturbing and a little bit weird, but really page turny and engaging. I thought the writing style was really descriptive while also being incredibly engaging. And I read it, I think pretty much all in one sitting, one or two sittings. Um, it's a great twist on like the monster in law type thing um, with these focuses around like body horror and creating this monster that Abby sees and bringing in this horror element of Laura being a ghost after she's passed and um, but it's also a lot more to do with like general family and how people deal with loss and grief but also the things that Abby decides to do afterwards are very interesting and she makes some interesting choices and I love an unreliable narrator if you've ever seen my videos you'll know that's one of my favorite things and Abby was great for that um I would say if you like books like Night Bitch I'm pretty sure actually in uh yeah pe this is recommended for people that like Night Bitch or Yellow Jackets which is a tv show which I haven't seen but I would really like to so if you like those kind of like comedy horror gothic 
hammer horror-esque type things i think this would be like perfectly up your street it's very strange it's very spooky but i can't lie it's very funny i loved it i loved it also the microphone is here i have a microphone i don't know if that was asmr anyway i'm getting distracted <laughs> Speaking of books that focus around grief and loss, this next book is perhaps the epitome of books about that. This is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. I don't have too much to say about this book, apart from the fact that my partner found me sobbing after I'd finished this and thought somebody had died in my family. But no, it was just me crying about fictional characters in a book. I feel like if a book can make me cry, even though I'm a big crier, but books specifically, that's like the highest praise I can possibly give. And this made me weep like a little baby. So this book focuses around a couple, Miri and Leah. So Leah has gone on a submarine mission that has failed, which is creepily similar to what's happening in the news at the moment, but we move. One day Leah returns and Miri can see that she's not quite the same person that she once was and starts to worry that maybe something more sinister has happened during this failed submarine mission. So the book is kind of split into two different narratives. So you've got Leah who is stuck in the submarine and then you've also got Miri after Leah's return dealing with what's wrong with Leah and what happens. We also sometimes get interjections of what happened to Miri while Leah was away and like waiting for her to return and the strange things that happened during that time. It is so beautiful in parts. Some of the passages of text, especially Leah's um, parts when she's in this submarine at the bottom of the ocean in complete darkness, it's incredibly claustrophobic, but yet uh, Julie Arnfield finds this way to write these huge sprawling passages of text, which focus about life, the world and everything. And it's so creepy and difficult to read at times, but it's just undeniably so incredibly beautiful. But then that's intertwined with what happens upon her return and the way that the pair deal with what's happened to Leah. Um, it's incredibly sad. Uh, I don't wanna say too much about it, um, I would say there is some body horror in here, which is very Black Mirror-esque. If you like Black Mirror, I really feel like you would like this book. There's so much to love in here, and it's such a short book and a very, very quick read, but it's just absolutely up my street, and I think this is some of the most beautiful, inspired writing that I've read in a very long time. So I would definitely recommend that one. My segues are getting better, because speaking of Black Mirror, a book that reminds me so much of Black Mirror, but like the best written episode of Black Mirror ever is this gem of a book. This is The Center by Aisha Manazir Siddiqui. Um, this is a proof copy. I was very kindly sent this by Picador, so thank you so much. This came out on the 6th of July, so I believe it's out now. First of all, I wasn't kidding about these covers. Like, that is stunning. If you saw that as a hardback in a shop, like, how would you not pick that up? It's gorgeous. Um, in my notes, I've literally just written in capital letters, what a read, exclamation mark, because that is the perfect way to describe this book. This is absolutely one of the best books I've ever read, and I have been recommending it to everybody in my life, and now I'm going to recommend it to all of you, because I feel like it's something that I've never really read before, and it has so many fresh ideas, the writing feels so fresh. So this book focuses around a woman called Anissa who is kind of at a dead end job in London, uh, spends her time translating Bollywood films and one day goes to a conference and sees this man speaking multiple languages incredibly well and is like, that guy is amazing and ends up chatting to him and he explains to her that the reason that he can learn these languages and speak them so well is because he goes to this place called the center and she wants to know all about it the center is an incredibly top secret place where you can only go if you're recommended and adam recommends for anisa to go it sounds too good to be true the concept is that you can learn a brand new language to incredible fluency i think within 10 days it's insane and it feels very much like a wellness center has very much that kind of vibe and of course anisa is interested and wants to see if it is all it's lived up to be and let me tell you it is and so much more than that because 
Oh my god, it just goes from there. You completely fall down this rabbit hole alongside Anissa and just discover things that you would never have expected. I don't want to say any more because I think there's some really key plot points and plot twists in this that you do not want spoiled for you. But I just think this book brings up so many fascinating conversations about um, language and translators in the publishing industry, but also in general. Um, and that's why I feel like it's something that I've not really read before. I feel like it's so fresh and exciting and absolutely gripped. I remember um, reading it pretty much constantly. I read it um, within, I think, two days and every chapter I would explain to my partner exactly what was going on because I needed him to be involved in it because I was like, you have to find out with me what is actually going on because it's just so enthralling. I think it would make an incredible indie film. It's, it's just absolutely fantastic. And yeah, it's out now. So if you do see this in the stores, 100%, you won't regret it. If you love Black Mirror, if you love anything strange and unusual, um, this is so the book for you. It's amazing. It's a, it's a five star read, guys. Five stars. Five stars. That's 10. Five. <laughs> Speaking of new releases, the next book is this beautiful guy. So this is Sugar Baby by Celine Sinclair, which is not out until the 27th of July. So it's out in a couple of weeks. Um, and I've seen the final cover for it. And oh my God, it is so beautiful. Again, this is a proof copy. So very, very thankful to Atlantic Books for sending this my way. And also um, <laughs> it smells like uh, Britney Spears fantasy. If you know, you know. Um, I received a very cute PR box and the whole thing was sprayed with fantasy and now I just associate that smell with this book and this story which was definitely their idea but it definitely worked. Oh my god it smells so good. This book was such a ride. It was so much fun. It was so fresh and exciting. Uh, it, I just devoured this book again i um find myself in reading slumps a lot of the time and i think why i've enjoyed these books so much is because consistently they've all pulled me out of a reading slump and i've just found myself completely engrossed in them so this book is about agnes green she's just turned 21 and she's a cleaner living in the suburbs and one of her clients has a daughter called Emily and Agnes and Emily slowly become friends and Agnes is pulled into Emily's life of being a sugar baby. It is fascinating. I don't really think I've read a story about like the concept of being a sugar baby and I've read a lot about it and like what people do. And I think this is a really like accurate and very interesting portrayal of that life. Um, because as you can imagine, yes, it comes with the private jets, the champagne, the glitz, the glamour, the money, but is it ever going to be a happy ending with these kind of books? You'll have to wait and see. You'll have to read it. I felt Agnes was a very well-rounded character. She was very relatable. Um, she comes from a very religious background, so I definitely related to that. And that contrast between her new friends and her new life compared to um, her mom and her younger sister who are trapped in this like religious rhetoric was very, very interesting. And I felt like it was dealt with very well. Yeah, it's definitely a page turner and it's just a fun summer read. I think like when the weather's nice, this is the kind of book to kind of read by the pool. I guarantee you'll just want to keep reading it and find out what happens to her because you really care for her as a character. And I think that's all down to the skill of the writing. So yeah, Sugar Baby out 27th of July. So out soon, but great book. I feel like I've been so blessed with books because the last book I have to talk to you about is like the most exciting. <laughs> okay, so not to be dramatic, but when I opened this parcel, I screamed. I can't lie. I had a little scream, had a little yelp um, because this is Eliza Clark's new book, Penance. If you remember, cast your minds back if you've been around. Boy Parts was one of my favourite, if not my favourite books of two, three years ago. I took it on a trip with me to Brighton and I read the whole thing instead of going out and seeing Brighton because I was just completely enthralled in the concept of that book and the writing and everything about it. And I thought it was incredible for a debut. So when I saw that Eliza Clark's new book was out, I felt very blessed to have been sent a final copy. Um, so thank you so much Faber for this copy. Again, it's gorgeous and even better. This book is set in the fictional town of Crowansey, which is near kind of Scarborough and Whitby up north. I have a little Crowansey postcard and I'm thinking, he's either got like 
Uh, it looks like a thimble, but also low-key like a condom. But can you see that? Interestingly, when I read the blurb, I realised this was going to be a very, very different book to Boy Parts in the sense that this book is actually kind of a book within a book. So it poses as a non-fiction book, which was written by a journalist, um, quite an infamous journalist in this world called Alec Z. Corelli, about this horrific murder that happened in this town of Croansi, where some girls very horrifically and tragically murdered one of their supposed friends and it goes into depth and has interviews and um excerpts from podcasts about this quite infamous true crime case um which is a very fascinating concept and there's a lot of discourse right now about true crime podcasts and true crime media i know lock henry the black mirror episode was released very recently which i found to be really interesting and as somebody that um for many years was very very much into kind of true crime um and has kind of left that area of my interests quite a few years ago i find this book quite startling to read and also a very good reminder of why often those things can be quite problematic if not you know done correctly and I think this just like perfectly fits into the like current discourse about that. I think it's been released at an absolute perfect time. I feel like that's kind of all you need to know if that sounds like something that you'll be interested in. I know it's very different to boy parts, but I would 100% recommend giving it a go because I think you would absolutely love it based on that. But what I can say is that I just found myself falling into the rabbit hole um, and it was like doing a kind of Tumblr deep dive or like a deep Wikipedia dive at like 3am where you found a really interesting thing that's happened and you want to know all about it and you like Google all the people involved. It's very much that vibe. It's kind of set in the like very late 2000s to like early 2010s and then late 2010s, um, which obviously was a period of time that I was growing up in. And a lot of this was painfully relatable. A lot of the areas of like the interviews that focus around the school and kind of the slightly fabricated, supposedly fabricated stories that the journalist has created are painfully accurate. If you were a Tumblr girly back in sort of 2014 and you remember the serial killer flower crown uh, trend that happened, this book is for you. I feel like it called me out on a lot of things from my youth, but also made me realise just how far and serious people do take those things that they read online. I would say like trigger warning wise, this has a lot in it. It has some very, very disturbing parts and some difficult to read elements, but I don't think any of it is gratuitous. I feel like it is very necessary for the subject matter that we're talking about in this. I would say that reading this is more of an experience than it is just picking up a book. I felt like it was kind of an all encompassing experience for me, but maybe that's because I relate to this on quite a deep level. Um, but I just think it's utterly fantastic. And yeah, if that sounds like anything that you would be interested in i really feel like this will be like one of your favorite books of the year it was so good and there we have it i've done five i've done my five most favorite reads of the year how exciting go me round of applause for me i really hope you enjoyed this video it's so lovely to be back on here please let me know in the comments what books you've been reading and if you have any recommendations for me please let me know i'd love to hear them and i'm sure i'll be back again in a week um, in the meantime, I'll leave the links to my TikTok account and also my Twitter so you can come and follow me there. Uh, and yeah, I hope you all have a lovely week and stay safe and stay... No, let's not think of a catchphrase. But yeah, I hope you all have a lovely week and I will speak to you soon. Bye! <laughs>